Hi, I'm Maddie on this week's Earth Juice. As environmental economist and all-round famous watery family member, Fabian Cousteau gears up to take the plunge in a record-breaking underwater research mission. We ask, could humans become aquatic? Master aquanaut and grandson of the legendary oceanic explorer Jacques Cousteau, Fabian will soon descend to the ocean floor on another dive. But this is not his usual assignment. This is a vital research mission in which he also hopes to break a new world record for the longest time a human has spent in an underwater research station. And if Fabian achieves his 31 day goal, he will beat the previous record holder, his grandfather, by one day. The aptly named Mission 31 will see Cousteau and his team descend at 20 metres to the newly developed Aquarius Underwater Laboratory, 14 kilometres off Key Largo in Florida, where they will be testing groundbreaking, well, water breaking equipment, such as underwater motorbikes, autonomous robots and highly advanced diving helmets. To be honest, that all just sounds like a laugh to me, but there is a serious side to this mission. Cousteau will research the effects that climate change is having on sponges, sea life and corals. He'll also lead human experiments, such as living without the presence of the sun and the long-term effects of high pressure underwater environments. So this got me thinking, could humans become aquatic? Well, as you know, apart from the odd swim or diving with tanks of air, prolonged periods of submersion usually result in, at best, wrinkly skin and, at worst, as you become exhausted, drowning. So when you've been in the pool for a long time, the reason your hands and feet get so wrinkly is because your skin is covered in dead keratin cells that absorb water. And because they're attached to living keratin cells beneath, they puff up, wrinkle and can't fall off, leaving your hands and feet looking like prunes. So a quick dip in the pool is no problem, but long-term submersion in water could potentially be dangerous as your skin would quite simply begin to break down. Your skin has an oily protective layer called sebum, which moisturises and lubricates and also makes your skin a little bit waterproof, but it begins to wash off after about 30 minutes. So if you were submerged in water for a few days, your skin would become sore and blister and then you could be at risk of serious infection. But the real obstacle to living an aquatic life isn't your skin falling off, it's breathing. Now, our lungs are designed to filter oxygen from the air that we breathe. They pass it to our blood, which then circulates it to the cells, organs and tissues, which obviously we need to survive. However, during gestation, human babies' lungs are filled with amniotic fluid, which they inhale and exhale just as they do air as soon as they're born. So if we had that ability to breathe fluid as fetuses, could we readapt that to live a watery existence? Well, in 1989, trials were held in Philadelphia to help several infants who were suffering from severe respiratory distress. They were administered total liquid ventilation, or TLV as it's known. By completely filling their lungs with perfluorocarbon, a synthetic liquid that's high in oxygen and carbon dioxide, to the doctor's delight, the babies showed remarkable breathing improvements. But despite its relative success in Philadelphia, total liquid ventilation, TLV, unfortunately remains very much an experimental procedure. And to safely control the flow of perfluorocarbon in and out of your lungs, it would still require an enormous amount of apparatus, including ventilators, heaters, pumps, and a limitless supply of perfluorocarbon. Sadly, such a device has never made it past prototype. Also, the sea is full of sea, not perfluorocarbon, and sadly we just couldn't extract enough oxygen from it in order to survive. So whilst life under the sea may sound idyllic, thanks to our incredibly flaky skin and the need for bulky equipment, I think we'll leave prolonged sea life to the masters of diving, the Custos. That's this week's juice. Why not check out another one of our films with the Custo family or learn to hold your breath like a seal? See you next time. When our face hits chilly water, like this, our body goes into instant safety mode. So my heart rate is currently at 112 beats per minute. Let's see if this works.